the function f of x is x cubed plus 12x squared plus 5, and we want to be able to locate any critical numbers, relative max and min, and determine where it's increasing and decreasing. Lots of information from the same two steps. So our first step is going to be to take the derivative and set it equal to 0. So our derivative here, we're going to bring down the power, and the derivative of x cubed is going to be 3x squared. Derivative of 12x squared is going to give us a 24x. And then the derivative of 5 is a constant, so the derivative is 0. So we take our first derivative and we set it equal to 0. We have an x squared and an x, so that tells me I'm going to need to factor to solve for x. So this is a binomial, something with two terms. I can either look for a greatest common factor or see if it's a difference of two square numbers. Well, since there's a plus instead of a minus in the middle, this is a sum of two numbers. So it's definitely not the difference between two squares. Um, also, 3 and 24 are not perfect squares. So we're not going to use that. We're going to plot a greatest common factor, which is our biggest number and our least power of x. So the biggest number that goes into 3 and 24 is 3. And then our least power of x between x and x squared is just a regular x. And so 3x times x will give me 3x squared. And then I need a 3x times a positive 8 will give me a positive 24x. So there's my two factors. They can only multiply to be 0 as long as one of them is 0. So I want to see if I can make either one of these equal to 0. So I want to see what makes 3x equal 0 and what makes x plus 8 equal 0. So can anything make 3x equal to 0? 3 times something has to be 0. Yeah, that something could be 0. Another way of doing it would be dividing both sides by 3 and seeing that x is 0. And the other piece, what makes x plus 8 0? We could subtract 8 from both sides. And we get x is negative 8. So we have two things that make the derivative 0. And since they make the derivative 0 and not undefined, and their original function is a polynomial, we know we can plug them back in. They're in the domain of the original function. We can automatically call them critical numbers. Now, if they made the derivative divide by 0 instead of just equal 0, if it made the derivative undefined and the original function was a fraction or something, then I'd have to check if it's in the domain of the original function to call it a critical number. But when it's a polynomial like this and it makes the derivative 0, we can automatically say these are critical numbers. They're in the domain of the original function and they made that derivative equal 0. So they're called critical numbers. Our second step is to identify relative extrema and increasing and decreasing using a sign chart. The very first thing that goes on your sign chart are those critical numbers. So we have 0 and negative 8. We want to make sure we put them in the correct order. Negative 8 comes first on a number line and then 0. We're going to label these. These are special. These are the only places where I'm going to switch increasing and decreasing. And these are the only places where I could possibly have relative max and min. Not any of the random test values we're about to choose. So my first random test value before negative 8, I could choose negative 10. Always plugging into the derivative. The sign of the first derivative tells you whether you're increasing or decreasing. You never plug into the original function on a sign chart. So we'd have 3 times negative 10, which would be a negative first factor. And our second factor would be negative 10 plus 8, which would stay negative. So two negatives multiply to be a positive. So we have a positive first derivative, which means the original function is increasing. Next interval, I can choose any number between negative 8 and 0. Maybe I'll choose negative 1. Plugging into the derivative always. So we do 3 times negative 1, which would be negative. And then we have negative 1 plus 8, which would be positive. So we'd have a negative times a positive, which would be negative. So the function switches from increasing to decreasing there. So we have our critical number here goes from increasing to a zero derivative to a decreasing. So is that a relative max, min, or neither? It's a relative max. And then I just need to finish off the sign chart to see what else is happening. So plugging into the derivative again, I need to choose any number after 0. So maybe I'll choose a positive 10. I'd have 3 times 10, which is positive, and then 10 plus 8, which is positive. So two positives are going to multiply to be a positive, 
and we're going to be increasing then from our positive derivative. So at zero, we went from decreasing to a zero derivative to a positive derivative. So we get a relative min. Now we're ready to fill out all sorts of information. Remember, increasing and decreasing only switch out critical numbers. I'm going to start with those. That way I don't even need to grab my calculator quite yet. So increasing happens before our first critical number and after our second critical number. So no random test values in my answer here. I'm going to say negative infinity to negative 8. Union not 10 to infinity, it's 0 to infinity. Only zeros and negative 8s in my answer here. And then decreasing is negative 8 to 0 between these two critical numbers. And now you can definitely pause the video, see if you can find these points yourself. We want to find the relative maximum point. So our max is at negative 8. And I need to plug in negative 8 into the original function. The only time we plug into the original function is when we want a y value. So I'm plugging into this function here. Negative 8 in parentheses cubed plus 12 in parentheses negative 8 squared plus 5 gives me 261. And then my minimum, I'm going to plug in 0 into the original function. When you plug in 0 to the original function, your y value is 5. So there we've used those same two steps yet again to find a lot of information.